Hi there, welcome back to another Hillbilly Storytime with Adam Compton. Today we're going to be doing a, another uh, Hack the Box uh, walkthrough. It's time for the retired system curling. It's another Unix system. It has a few different aspects to it. A little bit of a web app, some password guessing, or dictionary guessing I should say. It would be more appropriate. Some Unix commands just to try to decrypt a file. And um, otherwise it's uh, fairly straightforward. If you... Uh, or thinking about it, you might get stuck on a few things if you're not familiar with some of the commands and uh, techniques. But uh, hopefully, uh, walking through this today, I can shed some light on it if you're not aware of them. And uh, let's just see what we have. Let's go ahead and get started with nmap, our standard uh, scan. And we're doing dash s c dash s v and dot. 50. Go ahead and let that run through. Now I will say that there's probably a dozen different ways you could have attacked the system. Various aspects uh, you could have done differently, things of that nature. This is the approach that I felt most comfortable with myself, the attack vector that I took. Um, if you see somebody else's walk through or read somebody else's walk through, they may have different commands or different attack techniques. But uh, by all means, uh, look at the other ones as well. Learn from them. Find the one that works best for you. This is the one that worked for me. One thing we see right off the bat is well, on port 80, we have Apache running Joomla. We also have port 22, SSH on Ubuntu. So it's probably an Ubuntu system on the back end. First thing I want to do is jump over and look at the website 10, 10, 10, 150. It's a little site here, Joomla. Uh, a couple of blogs, you can click through on these. Uh, we see that somebody signed this one, Floris, that might be important later. We have super user. Uh, one thing I will say is there are commands out there called, uh, or there's a tool out there called Joom Scan. There's probably other ones as well uh, that you can run against a site like this to try to identify if there's any vulnerabilities. I will say knowing that this one I've already went through it. You know that it is version 3.8.8. Um, I can show how to gather that here in a moment. Actually, I'll go ahead and show that. Uh, you can pull that from, where is that? Uh, on Joomla, it is under slash. Oh, if I can spell right, administrator slash manifest slash file slash what? Joomla. I can type Joomla.xml. Is that it? Yes. Um, that should be, that is administrator manifest files Joomla.xml. That should be available on all uh, Joomla installs unless they've removed it. But you can see here, this one is 388 and done May 2018. You can go out and search on Searchploit. You can go out to CVE details. You might find something depending on when you're watching this video, but at the time of me recording this, I didn't see any exploits for this one. So, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll come back to see if we can find a different way in. Probably password guessing or something of that nature. So, let's go ahead and go back. One thing that you will want to take note of on Joomla installs is you have 10, 10, 150 slash administrator slash index.php if I can type is the administrative login page. Um, we'll probably be needing this as we want to log in as administrator super user account as opposed to just a standard user here. Uh, let's jump back over here. One of the first things I'll do is I will we'll do a curl on the site 10 10 10 1 50 and see what we have in here. You can scroll down through here and see all kind of fun stuff. One thing I did notice right off the bat though was this at the bottom. You will find various things in comments on websites. Uh, usually it's not as blatant as calling it a secret.txt, but in this scenario for a capture the flag, you can definitely look for things of that nature. It can help. So let's go ahead and HTTP. Let's go to secret.txt and we get a string here. That's alphanumeric. It looks like it might be base64 encoded. It says there's four, four, 
four. Yeah, it's in Brock to four, so most likely it is. Um, right now, you could try it if it isn't on four. You can pad it out with equal signs. Uh, one to three of those, just as needed to make it uh, aligned on a four block. But so let's go ahead and echo this out to see if we get anything out of this. Type that through base sixty four dash d to decode it, and yeah, we get something clear text out there. Curling twenty eighteen. Let's jump back up here. Let's try this, and we'll do administrator with not that whatever that is. C U R L curling twenty eighteen bang, and we get nothing out of that. So I'm not really getting anything right here. So let's go back. This did say it was a cool site. So cool is a if I cool is a tool that we can use to build a dictionary list out of based on what content is on the website. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's do cool dash write it out as cool.txt and we're targeting 10 10 10 150 shouldn't take very long for this to go through all it's doing is it's scraping the website looking for things that may be words or something of that nature and pulling it out let's go ahead and look at cool here as you can see yeah you have and are print uncategorized anything that looks like it might be a string off of there it pulls out so let's uh, try to brute force this. Since we have what appears to be a password, I'm guessing we have to brute force who this super user is. Uh, we don't know who that is at the moment. So let's go back here. Let's try whatever you want. Let's do curling 2018 exclamation. Let's turn on our Burp Suite proxy. Hit log in. Go over here. Did we capture anything? Yeah, I don't have that turned on. All right, so whatever. 2018 exclamation. Now let's jump down here. Let's go ahead and turn our inner. Uh, let's try this again. So I can actually try this right. Curling 2018. Go ahead. Did I get it? All right, now let's go ahead and send this to Intruder before we go ahead and turn that off. All right, over here, let's clear all the highlights. Let's go to admin. Let's change that one. That's the one that we want to replace. Let's go to load. Let's load cool.txt and hit start. Now, you're going to see this clone down here as all those come across. Let's see what one of these looks like. Uh, username and password do not match. Or you do not have an account yet. So I'm willing to bet any that are in Fowler is going to look like that. Let's go down through here see if we see any that do not match that. Nothing as of yet. It's almost there. It's only 218 to try. Don't see anything yet. All right, now we start to see some. We have address, email. First one of these, though, is Floris, which, unlike the other ones, isn't giving us that. So I'm willing to bet Floris might be it. Let's go ahead and turn Burp off. Let's go ahead and reload this page. Let's go Floris, and then we do Curling 2018. Um, bang. Login. And as I said before, we probably could have guessed that by using just you know, some reasoning, and that was a signature on here. But to go through the process and using cool, like they kind of hinted at on the page title, I thought that was a good exercise. All right, we're sitting here at a content management systems uh, admin portal or super user portal. One thing that you want to do when you log into a system like this, if it's WordPress, it's Joomla, Drupal, whatever it is, See if there's a way that you can modify, upload, change uh, any of the content that's on there. Uh, ideally, to try to get a reverse shell or a web proxy, something like that, going on Joomla sites, you can easily do that by going into templates, template, and you can see down here you have two templates installed, Bees3 and Protostar. If we go back to the home page, 
Let's go view page source. You can see right here it's using templates proto star. So willing to bet that's probably the easiest one for us to do. You could try either one, it doesn't really matter. But let's go down through here. We could change any one of these. I would rather create a new file. Let's call it Hillbilly. And let's change that to PHP. Let's go ahead and hit create. Inside of here, let's create a simple PHP reverse shell or no um, command execution. It's a web shell. So system. Oh, what am I doing here? System dollar sign request bracket call the command blah 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 bracket semicolon that that and I have too many of that in there does that match up now yes I think that's right so let's go ahead and hit save now if we try to go to slash hillbilly dot php we get nothing but like I said, if we go back here, we see that it's under templates protostar. So let's just insert that. Templates slash protostar. And we get something that doesn't give us an error. So let's go ahead and do cmd equals uh, who am I? Oh, typing is not my thing. So there we go. We get that. Well, I could do this. Uh, we could try to upload a reverse shell here. We could try to do a lot of things. For this purpose, we don't need to. Um, let's just copy that. Jump down here to command line. Let's do curl. And we can get the output there. I like working at a curl easy enough. Why does present working directory? Okay. Uh, ls. We have to give it plus uh, for spaces in here. We are trying to URL and code. Uh, slash home. And we get Floris. So let's look in Floris. Let's do ls-la. What do we have in here? We have bash history, a bunch of stuff. But remember, we're not Floris. We are www-data, which means on all of these, nothing is owned or group owned by www-data. So we'd have to be in the group column. Only thing in here is bash history, but it is catted to dev null, so nothing there. Uh, we could read bash logout or rc, probably nothing to worry about. Local, no. Uh, profile, no. Password backup would be a good one, since we have that. We can't get to user.txt, and we can't do admin area. So, let's go ahead and... Oops. Slash, uh, what was it? Password backup. But I don't want to do ls, I want to cat that file. Ba, ba, ba. All right, let's go ahead and output that to back up. All right, this looks uh, weird. I haven't met that, but uh, I happen to know that this is a output of the XXD command on Unix. Uh, it gives you hex output, uh, debugging information, stuff like that, or it can be used for that. So. How do you know? How do I know that's what it looks like? Well, let's take any given file here. Let's look at cool. All right, we have that. You can type xxd and then cool, and you get output that looks very similar. It's the same columns. This last one gives you the human readable side of it, the ASCII output. Um, as that's how that looked. Let's jump back up here to this one. Doesn't look the same, so it's probably some other kind of file format um, or some other encoding. So one way you can reverse that is you can do xxd-r for restore or reverse. And then we're going to do the password. And that gives us garbage as well. There's another command here you can do. Well, let's just do that on everything in here. ls. Let's do file on everything in here. You can see it comes back. It says ASCII, ASCII, XML. Um, it tells you the, what kind of file this is. So let's do that here. And then let's do file dash tells us it's a bzip2 file. So one thing you can do is you can unbzip2 a file by doing bz cat on the file and we get output. So file dash again, looks like it's gzipped. 
So we can undo Jesus with Zcat. And we get output it like that again. So let's do file again. It's another bzip2. Bzcat. And this time it is, well, if you could figure it out from here, that's great. But let's go ahead and see what the file is again. It is a tar archive. So let's go ahead and do tar xvf on what was passed in. And we get that ls-lart. And we see now we have a password up here. Cat password. And we got that string. So there's all kinds of different ways you could have done this. You, there's online uh, web applications that you can pass these files into. That are, you can start reversing them, um, going through the sequence, all this. In a realistic world, you're very rarely ever going to find a file that was uh, this is tape archive tarred uh, bzip would gzip bzip would again, and then something else done on it. Very rarely you're going to find that in a real world scenario. Um, you'll find it on a capture the flag sort of scenarios like this. So having a way that if you recognize that it is a XXD output, you can reverse that. Use things like file to try to identify what kind of file it is and then know the commands to undo those. Um, this just comes with experience or having large cheat sheets. So what we do have here is we have what might very well be a password. It is not base 65, base 65, yeah, base 64 encoded because there's other characters in there like, let's see, pipe, stuff like that. That can't be part of base 64. So, but this came out of the Flores account directory and we do know that there is SSH on the system. So let's try clear screen first. So let's go ahead and SSH in as Floris at 10.10.10.150. Let's go ahead and paste in that password. Uh, cat password. There we go. Let's try this again. Must have had something weird in my buffer. And okay, we're in. Who am I? Okay, Floris, good. Uh, let's go ahead and cat user. All right, so you got the user one there. What else do we have? We already looked at password backup. Let's look at, well, one thing I usually do is sudo dash L. What commands can I do? We know that one. Okay, not allowed to do sudo. So it's probably not what we want to do. You could look for set UID binaries. You could possibly try to do, um, Dirty Cow or something like that. Um, that's up to you. It is Ubuntu. Might be able to do Dirty Socks, stuff like that. That's not the intention of this uh, exercise. So let's go ahead and CD into admin. Since that's here, we have a good feeling that's probably what it is. Let's look at input. URL equals HTTP. So pointing to the base website. Let's cat out the port. And that looks like, since that's at the bottom, that looks like the base uh, website. Oh, there's a different number of things you could do here. You could try to see what processes, what processes are running. Um, you could try to do different kind of things in there. There's various commands for that. All right, so we know that there is the output of, or a copy of the homepage here, and a file input that basically says that's the URL. If we look at the directory, we have, yep, we can, well, we own this directory, so we can read and write these files. Is there anything happening here? So, let's screen. That was 1932. All right, what happens if we change what's in there? Um, Vim input. Let's change this from this to secret.txt. Uh, let's, let's tell or let's cat report. That is what was in um, secret.txt. So in this case, I would want to do, you could do any number of things here, but what I'm going to do is 
curl, most likely what they're using, um, or some other command like that. Uh, you can do file, uh, let's insert file colon slash slash, to give it the slash for root, slash root dot txt. And then we see how long it takes it to update that. Give it a few seconds here. Did I do input properly there? Oh. Oh, there it went. Uh, just as I was uh, starting to question it. It looks like it resets it itself, but there you go. So, what did we learn from this one? This was a fun little one. You had to do some password guessing um, or username guessing. Uh, you could modify a content management system's uh, template files to give you a remote shell or a web shell. You use some Unix commands to uncompress and reconstruct files. Um, what was actually happening in this scenario was it was running a uh, that last part, it was running a cron job that was copying that uh, whatever was in input over. Uh, you rarely if ever find this in the real world either. I have, I have to say though, I have found things similar to it as part of a developer's uh, workflow just to make, to just to ensure that everything was working well. They set up things like that just so they could pull it to do status checks not knowing that there are flaws built into it if you happen to gain access to their system, various things like that. It's uh, kind of interesting, but you will probably find it more often on on a capture the flag sort of competition. So we've got this one taken care of. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like to see more content like this one, uh, just please stay tuned, like, hit subscribe. Um, I will hopefully try to get more of these out over the upcoming weeks. Uh, I'll probably be focusing on the Unix systems as that's what I'm most interested in at the moment. Uh, given time, I'll probably jump over to some of the Windows systems as well. If there's a particular system you'd like to see me do a walkthrough on, please uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And as always, thank you and have an awesome day.